Hello Internet, my name is Lave, and it's good to see you because I've been away for a week. I went to Ibiza of all places on a mate's stag do, so I've been broken. I feel very delicate and to ease my way back into the whole movie reviewing thing, I went to see a very pleasant film which is being dubbed as This Generation's The Exorcist. That's right, I watched Hereditary and oh boy. Woo! <laughs> so in terms of its synopsis, it follows the Graham family. You've got Annie the mum, Steve the dad, Charlie the daughter, and Peter the son. And they're all dealing with the fact that their grandmother has recently passed away, and then a whole bunch of weird shit starts happening. And honestly, that's all you really need to know, and all I'm willing to say at this stage. So to talk about this film without giving away spoilers, I'm gonna talk about the casting and the performances. Firstly, Toni Collette as Annie, the mum. She is terrific, and whenever I think of Toni Collette, I always think of her performance in The Sixth Sense, which probably helped her get the part in this film because there are similarities. That scene in The Sixth Sense when Cole finally tells her his secret is so goddamn well acted, and Toni Collette brings that over into this film, except this time around, she's privy to all of the weird shit. It's happening to her and she does a fantastic job. The film establishes fairly early on that there has been an estrangement between her and her recently deceased mother. She says quite early to her husband, should I feel sad that she's gone but it's weird that I don't? And the film does a fantastic job of filling you in as to why without ever feeling like it's dumping exposition on us, the audience. It does it in a really organic way. And the film poses the question, is there a deep-rooted psychological trauma which she's repressing or is there a supernatural element at play? Which I will discuss a little bit more later on. For now, I'm gonna stick with the performances because similarly, the same starts happening to her son played by Alex Wolfe. He's not quite the cool kid. He's not quite the nerd. He's a bit of a stoner. And again, weird stuff starts happening to him. What I found really fascinating was his relationship relationship with his little sister Charlie, played by Millie Shapiro. Another terrific child performance. Again, another character which is deeply unsettled, but one that you also feel very sympathetic for. What a performance from this little girl. I found her completely fascinating every time she was on screen. And then to round off the family, you've got Gabriel Byrne as Steve, the dad. Again, I think that is a terrific bit of casting because whenever you cast Gabriel Byrne in a film, for me at least, there always comes certain expectations when you look at his previous roles. And that's all I'm gonna say on that. For me, the real star of this film is the writer and first time director, Ari Aster, and it does feel like a bit of an announcement. He's arrived on the scene. He's certainly gonna be on my radar from now on. He does a fantastic job. I really admired his craftsmanship and control of his vision. And he delivers a slow burning but atmospheric film which didn't exactly scare me to the bone, but it certainly did give me the creeps. But what I really admire about Astor's approach to the horror genre in this film is that he's not doing anything revolutionary. He is aware of all of the horror cliches and the tropes, but it's his execution of it. As an example, there are a couple of moments where something will move in the background, but he's not playing it up as a jump scare. The music doesn't suddenly just go whoo and make you scared. Instead, it just lingers. There is a moment where you're just looking at something and it doesn't cut away, the music isn't there, and you're just looking at it. And for me, that's when your mind starts playing tricks on you and you th start thinking, is, is that what I'm really seeing? That is way more effective to me than a big jump scare. And that's just the type of film that he's going for. Another example of a movie cliche is having a montage which demonstrates a passage of time, but what he does is he overlays it. The connecting thread is not someone crying, it's someone wailing in complete agony. It's heartbreaking, it's really uncomfortable and once again terrifically acted. There's also this recurring motif of miniatures, that's Annie's job, she recreates these sets in miniatures, which does mean we get this absolutely seamless shot from the real world into this miniature set, it's absolutely seamless, it's beautiful. But what I find really interesting is throughout the film there will be an establishing shot going into the next scene 
And I was questioning, was that a miniature or was that actually the real world? It just adds to that level of strangeness and that weirdness. Now I do have a few negatives. As I say, this film is a bit of a slow burner. I think it could have been maybe a little bit shorter, but then thinking about it, I can't think of any scene that could have been cut. I do need to see this one again. But to really unpack what I thought about this film, I do need to venture into spoiler territory. So that's your warning. I'm aware this film has been out in America, so I'm hoping that a lot of you have seen it already. But if you haven't, you should stop watching now. So for me, this film was at its best when it was shrouded in ambiguity, when you are questioning whether this is a psychological study of trauma. Are this family just being paranoid? Or is this really a supernatural event which is happening? And of course, the film does reveal all and reveals that the grandmother was the head of a cult and she worships this pagan deity and they're trying to bring about the Antichrist, which is all fine. I'm not saying that the film was ruined. There are some really creepy scenes that happen in the third act. I'm just saying that I preferred the build up to it all when it was shrouded in ambiguity and you could interpret it as either them going crazy or it being a supernatural event. So that's my thoughts on Hereditary, and pause the video if you wanna take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. I completely understand why this film is getting so much praise heaped on it, and rightly so. There is a lot to admire. The performances are terrific. Ari Aster's execution of his vision and direction is terrific. I walked out of it satisfied. I really enjoyed it. I was questioning why the marketing team were angling for the exorcist for the new generation, when really, it's Rosemary's baby for the next generation, which isn't a bad thing at all. I guess it is a smart move from the marketing team to market it for The Exorcist rather than Rosemary's baby, because if they'd said Rosemary's baby, everyone would have guessed the ending. So thanks very much for watching this review. I really do appreciate it. As I say, I've been away for a little while, so I'm just getting back into the swing of things. I'm probably not gonna do a review of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which I have seen. If you do want me to review it, let me know in the comments. If I get the time, I will do it. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching this review. I really do appreciate it. If you can, give this video a like and don't forget to share the lave.